guys, so I decided to do a quick video today because I've been getting a lot of questions from my clients about how I curl my own hair at home and how it always looks so perfect, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys that this is what my hair normally looks like when it's undone. It's a little bit inconsistent with waves and straight pieces and all this great stuff, so I wanted to show you how I go about taming my hair on my own. Um, usually what works for me is I go ahead and section it into a couple different sections. Usually three is what I start out with. The crown section, which was that super messy, fluffy part, the middle section here, and the very bottom near the nape of my neck. Um, what's easiest for me is to divide it into two sections like I'm what I'm doing right now. Um, and also, as you can kind of see, I do have some frizzier sections and some straighter sections. So sometimes what I'll do is after dividing it into a couple different pieces, I'll wrap some around the iron like this, keeping the iron pointing down and starting at the top and winding around all the way to the bottom. And then you'll also see some pieces that I kind of smooth it out with the barrel first, just like that, and then go back around. This kind of helps give me a more consistent curl. Um, also keeping in mind that I'm going for more of a beachier look, so I'm not doing anything too polished. My hair is day old right now, so I'm not prepping it with anything because it already kind of has some grit to it. Oh, mine is me dropping my hairspray. And, um, I'm also not keeping the hair on the iron very long, just long enough for the hair to heat up. I point the iron down because it's a little bit more comfortable for me too, and it actually lets me start curling the hair at the very top, working towards the bottom, keeping my ends out of the iron, and um, that also helps me get the beachier look versus the ring look. So once you get the grip of holding the iron, holding your hair taut, you'll notice that the hair can heat consistently. The biggest problem that I feel like people have is they're not actually holding the hair on the iron tight enough, and that's what's kind of keeping them from actually getting a good curl in their hair. Once I get to this top middle section here, I divide it out into the sides of my head, and then I'll divide that in half, that way I'm not working with so much hair. The best thing to do is not grab a section any bigger than the width of your iron, so I aim to get about one inch sections of my hair. That way everything's consistent and not too big. So again, keeping everything nice and taut with the iron pointed down, that's the most comfortable way to get this curl, letting it fall out and kind of cool. You can kind of see that I got just a little bit of a wave, nothing too tight, um, no ringlets, just a little, little beach wave. So after you're done working section by section, you can kind of go in with a working hairspray. And when I say working hairspray, I mean something that's flexible. And you'll notice that on the cans of hairspray when you actually buy them, they do have levels of hold. The one I'm working with is a medium hold from Redken and it actually says flexible hold on the hairspray. So things that are flexible are combable, they're brushable, they're not going to build up in your hair and leave you with sticky films. A lot of finishing hairsprays have that really strong hold and those are not great for curling hair. Those are great for setting styles, but that's not something that you should be using right now. You'll also notice too that I'm not coating every strand with hairspray before I put it on an iron. And I feel like that's what a lot of my clients tell me they do and that's where we work on course correcting because coating each section with hairspray and then putting it on a hot iron is just burning alcohol into your hair. And it's also making it sticky, hard to deal with, and sometimes not even curl. So light product when you're curling, um, unless you're perfectly clean as far as your hair goes, if you just washed it, the best thing to do is to use a texturizing spray just to give your hair some grit. Um, or maybe even a dry shampoo just to give it some kind of product. But I would not go in with a hairspray first. I would just use it afterwards. So you can see on this side, I changed the direction of how I'm holding the iron and how my arm is pointing me down too. Now I'm kind of in front of my face with my right arm, arm over and holding it with my left hand. This is what's most comfortable for me and you'll find what's most comfortable for you, but this is kind of what works and what's kind of quick enough for me. Also, don't get discouraged that I'm doing this super fast. This video is sped up just a little bit. Um, once I get to the back, I'll divide that section in half and kind of do what I did once more and divide that section in half again. Um, like I said, just giving yourself little bits to work with at a time keeps it from being overwhelming, especially if you have a lot to work with like I do. Um, and don't be discouraged either if this doesn't work out for you the first time. It does take a little bit of a, you know, it's, it's a bit of a learning curve to kind of handle this iron. I also have an extended barrel iron from Hot Tools. You can see it's a little bit longer than a normal curling iron. Um, it definitely makes it easier for beach waves. So now when I get to the back section, I'm actually taking that iron and holding it behind my head. That way I'm not risking burning my arms as much and it also gives me a great 
um, a great way to kind of get closer to the back of my head and get that curl from the very top of the hair to the very end. Um, it's a little bit awkward at first, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you'll see that you can actually hold the hair really taut in the iron like this. And holding the ends out like I just showed you is, is keeping the ends from burning in that barrel. So don't also think that you have to get to the very, very tip of the hair. I'm almost leaving about an inch of the very bottom kind of out and pulled away from the hair. So I'm pulling the iron one way and I'm pulling the tip of the hair that I'm holding the other way and that kind of holds it taut. And sometimes when you don't hold it taut is when you wind up taking the iron away and you're like, what the hell, like my hair isn't curled. But what really happened is you did get it around but you're not holding it on the iron long enough and you're not holding it on consistently enough. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky in the back too on the other side for me because I do change directions as well. You'll see in a second that I'm going to be holding it another way. But this is just what's more comfortable for me on this side. So I switch it up a little bit and I hold it on the same side as my arm. This is just what's easiest for me. Like I said, there's, there's plenty of ways to do it. There's no right or wrong. Just what kind of is easiest for you. What's going to keep your fingers away from the iron. Sometimes these irons come with a glove. Um, to protect that free hand. I personally just don't feel like I get a good grip on the hair without it, so that's kind of a nuisance to me, but there are protect protective gloves, especially because these irons are super hot. Um, the hairsprays that I'm working with are Redken. I'm using their versatile working hairspray, like I said earlier, and I'm also going to be showing a product called Wax Blast. Wax Blast is more of a dry, um, aerosol can spray it gives a little bit more texture so once I'm done with this section here I actually take it and spray it in just to fluff it up a little bit um, I like my curls a little bit piecier and a little bit crazier not so polished especially when I'm not going for a polished look I'm going for a more like oh I just happen to have wavy hair um, and hope it looks natural so this is kind of what works for me this section is my trouble section. As you can see, my hair is super fluffy on top. My textures just are not consistent. And since my hair is day old, I feel like it's a little bit weighing down on my scalp right now and it's a little bit on the oilier, oilier side. So I'm taking some dry shampoo and section by section spraying it in my root. Um, you can see that I'm pretty far away from my root because sometimes dry shampoo leaves a powdery residue. So I just go in section by section and spray it at the root and kind of shake it into my hair. Um, this is the easiest way to do it for me and just go in and kind of almost like scrub it in like you're shampooing it in. You could also take a round brush or just a brush and blow dry it in too. Some leave more white powdery finishes, some are tinted. Um, this, one's, I, this one's a powdery finish but because I'm not spraying it directly at the root you don't see any of it. But if you spray it too close you definitely will. So now you can see that I'm actually going to use the barrel of the iron. The reason why I'm doing this is because that top section for me, I want to be the loosest. I don't want this top section to be a perfect curl in the look I'm going for today. So you can kind of see that I'm starting at the top and just sliding it through the ends. I'm not taking the curling iron and clamping my ends into it and then going all the way back up. I think that's where people make their biggest mistake and they also wind up frying the ends of their hair is because they'll clamp the ends of their hair in the barrel and then roll it all the way up. That means that that weak section of your hair, those ends, are sitting in that barrel the whole time and just sizzling. So the best way to do this is to start at the very top and then work the hair into the iron. This part takes some practice, but you'll notice you get such a better curl and a curl that starts way higher than just taking the ends and rolling it all the way up. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's a little bit fast in this video. I should probably make another video of it slower just so you can kind of see the technique. But you can see that that section just curled back out of my face now. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning um, the iron so that all of the hair is going away from my face. So no matter where it is on the crown of my scalp that I'm doing this curl, I'm positioning it so that the barrel is curling up and away, almost in a J shape going towards where the mirror is or the camera is in this video. So in that back section that you see, I just sprayed a little bit of that wax blast on my root just because I want a little bit of lift there in the very back. But again, starting at the base and then rolling it up and that back section is a little bit longer so I just took it and made it a wave. Um, in this next section, you'll see I do it again. I start at the very base and work my way back. So it clamps about an inch from the scalp 
and then I roll it back and then I push the iron down and I keep rolling back. And the second that my ends are in there, I literally let it hold on for a second and then I let it go. Um, that is the best way for me to curl my own hair. You'll also find there are different solutions to everyone's problems. Um, depending on if your hair is shorter or longer or where your layers are, it's kind of trial and error. It, it took me a little while to figure out how my hair curls best. And it's a little bit, it's, you know what, it's always different too, because some days I wake up with a lot of texture and some days I don't. And as far as you guys go, some of you have pin straight hair and some of you have really wavy hair. So there's always going to be a little bit of a trial and error period to figure out what works best for you. This works best for me and to hold the shape, I usually will sleep in a French braid um, and then just fix it in the morning, kind of do touch up curls and it keeps it nice and messy. So as far as a beach look, this is the best I can do with my own hair. Um, I really hope this helped you guys a little bit. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.